Hey everybody, welcome back to Interstage Window. This is my stream that is a conversation with a friend where we go into a little bit more of a, a deep dive on a role play topic. And uh, today I have with me Bree. So Bree, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Bree, your local Canadian Ravenclaw. And yes, I do identify by Hogwarts house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, there's no shame in that. It happens sometimes, right? Um, yes. All right, so we're it's a little bit different today, so I just want to let you guys know uh, I am going to host and produce because Landon today is, has a very, very exciting day. She is moving, so I know we told you guys about that a couple of weeks ago that she was kind of in the process of getting a house, and, um, and that's all happened, so she's moving today, so she's probably not going to be joining us, although she knows she is invited and she's welcome to pop in at any time. And, uh, and I know some of the advertisements that we put out for this said that Naomi was going to be joining us today, but she had some stuff come up. So again, she might pop in a little bit later, but, um, but probably not today. It's probably just going to be me and Brie, but that's okay. We got this, right, Brie? Yes, we got it all under control. <laughs> yes. So, um, all right. So let's get started with um, with favorite things. So while I get the while I get the game going, um, Bree, what is your favorite thing today? Um, my favorite thing today is it's probably a little superficial, but like I'm in lockdown, so there's not much I can do. So I've basically just been online shopping on an app called Romwe. Oh. And- it's so addicting and everything is like cheap like i'm buying like jewelry for like 99 cents oh my god i want some 99 cent jewelry (laughs) that's why i messaged you because i was seeing all this nail art stuff and it's literally like two dollars for like a lot of stuff yeah so i have seen those kind of things before on like um what do you call it what's that other one that everyone buys stuff on yeah wish on wish i've seen a lot of that stuff and hey marina so glad to have you with us here today hi marina um yeah on wish i see a lot of that stuff and i i have actually ordered from wish before i assume romway is very similar and then a lot of times it comes from from china and uh it takes like a month to get here (laughs) it's it's so stressful i hate waiting for it but like i love buying like well things for like forty dollars. I mean, me too. That's why I got sucked <laughs> into Wish. So I, 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 I got your message about Romway, but I have not actually checked into it, and uh, and that's that's the reason why is because I'm like this is going to be like Wish again, where it's going to take forever to get here. But you know, if you uh, if you don't mind it, if you don't mind it, then uh, then it's it ordering from those places is great. Oh hey Thumper, hey Mochi. Oh my gosh, everybody's here today. That's so awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here um, here for another Brie episode. It's been a minute since we had you on the show, right, Brie? Yeah, I think it was July or August of last year. Yeah, it's been a while. So really excited really to have you back. Yeah. So tell us, okay, what besides jewelry did you order on Romway? Oh, gosh, I've gotten so many clothes, um, some shoes, um, socks. I, I showed those in the Discord server. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're so cute. Y'all, she has the cutest socks that she got um, from I, Romwe. Yeah, they're, I basically just buy anything that I see that I like. And phone cases. That's a big one. Oh, yeah, we recently had to get another phone case um, for Levi. His started to crack. So it was like, well, if the oh, phone no. case is starting to crack, then we don't want his uh, his poor phone to suffer. So we had to get a new case. He's got like a, he went yeah, from a red one to a blue one. Ooh. Yeah. The colors are so nice too for some of them. Mm-hmm. Do they have a lot of those like clear phone cases? I feel like that's super popular right now. Yeah, the clear phone cases with like um, minimalist art design on them. They're super popular on there right now. Oh, beautiful. I love that. All right, so um, I'll do my favorite thing. Actually, I'm going to pause the game for my favorite thing, and we're going to switch back to webcam for a second. And Brie, you're going to have to help me with this one, okay? I know I didn't tell you this was happening, but but here we go. You're going to have to help me. (laughs) Oh, my God. Here we go. (laughs) So my favorite thing this week is snacks. And um, that is because my husband bought me for like a a, a little gift, a pre-Valentine's Day gift, this box of Korean snacks, random Korean snacks. And we're going to try one together today. And so y'all got to tell me which one you think I should try. So we've got, okay, I'm going to show you. So we've got shrimp crackers. Okay. So um, Brie, to describe these for you, it's a, it's a red bag and they, the shape is like French fry shape, but I think they're really potato chips more. And it's got like a, a, you know, prawn on it, like a big old shrimp. 
Oh yeah. And yep. And then the next, the other one we might try is called Choco Pie. This is Korean Moon Pie. I swear to God, like that's what it is. It even says like it says on the package like since 1974, like it's trying to pretend to be a moon pie, but it doesn't say moon pie on it. And then the third thing is mystery. It's in a silver and yellow package and it's got Korean on it. No English. So I have no idea what this is. So y'all in the chat and Brie as well, which one should I try today with you guys? Should I try mystery Korean? Should I try the off-brand moon pie or should I try shrimp chips? I'm biased and I love chocolate, so I'm going to say the chocolate moon pie. Okay, so moon pie, Brie says moon pie, Thumper says mystery, and, <laughs> and Marina says mystery too. Y'all love the chaos. Uh, Mochi, if you're still here, you should tell it. Tell us too. Uh, Thumper says mystery. Whoa, many votes for mystery from Thumper. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do then is for whichever one that I try that I'll do on stream today, the other two, I'm going to try them still and post them on my TikTok so y'all can still see what they're like so you don't miss out on uh, on the one that you voted for, even if we don't do it. So uh, you guys can follow my TikTok to see that. It's, it's at Karen Terry. I'll try that tomorrow. I'll post that tomorrow. Uh, but it looks like, okay, it looks like most people want mystery, so that's what we're going to do. So sorry, I'm Brie. Overruled. You're overruled. We'll try the chocolate <laughs> later, though. I'll try the chocolate later, and I'll make sure I film it. Okay. So mystery. Where's the? There it is. Something that I really do appreciate about a lot of these Korean snacks is the packaging is relatively easy to get into. I struggle to get into a lot of packaging with nails. You know, I don't want to break them. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it is. They're like sesame cracker cookies. Okay, let me find a whole one. Some of them are broken. This is what it is. It's got like sugar dust on it and I can see sesame seeds in it. it like... Okay, let's see what this is. I'm interested in the texture of it. It is very crunchy. It is very crunchy. I'm sure y'all can hear me like crunch, crunch like crazy into the microphone. <laughs> The texture is kind of like almost like a dense Ritz cracker, but it's sweet. Like any, and it definitely has a sesame flavor. It's like sweet sesame flavor, and it's like um, like a dense Ritz cracker, I would say. Which actually is not uncommon. A lot of the stuff that we've tried so far is very like cracker consistency. It's very like you know, like those cookies, the pirouette cookies. They're like the tubes with the filling inside them, yeah. and yeah, yeah. A lot of these Korean snacks are basically some form of that for some reason. I don't know why that's, that's so, so popular. Yeah, but apparently that's super popular. Hey, Lunar. I don't know what's up with that. All right. So that was my, that was my Korean snack that I wanted to show you guys. We're going to switch back to the game now. Okie dokie. Okay. So with, um, ah, oh, Jane. I forgot my password again, but I made it. You made it to the right account, too, because <laughs> I see that you're in your VIP one. So we're all good, Jame. Okay, so with all of that being said, um, favorite things good. Okay, Bree, do you want to do the honors and tell everybody what we're going to be talking about today? So we're going to be talking about advertising and retinition, which basically we're going to go through some tips and tricks that we have for advertising for role play groups. I have a little bit to share on advertising for other things including just like independent one-on-one -on -one things, etc. Mhm. Mm yep. So we're going to talk about advertising your games and we're going to talk a little bit about ret retaining your people once, you know, once you get them in. Like what do you do? How do you keep them, right? Ah oh, shoot, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. So, um so let's get let's kind of get started with that with um, talking about what we what we feel like are some major tips, right? So I made a video a long time ago, like a long time ago now, that uh, goes into how how I do my advertising, and I gave essentially three things in there that sh that every advertisement needs to have, and that is a written element, a um, visual element and also a call to action. So those are kind of the three elements of advertising. And, and Brie, I know you have some experience with some advertising outside of role plays. Um, so yeah. I'm curious if you would say, would you say that like 
regular advertising is similar in that way that it tends to have those those three elements or would you say that it's different kind of before we get into it i guess i'm curious about that yeah definitely um i advertised a book which i guess essentially when you look at um a role play group it's kind of like writing a big book in its own way um <laughs> yeah kind of yeah so um, I would definitely say the advertisement process was similar. We, I had to make a lot of the graphic edits for it and then create like the little bit of writing that we put beneath the post, creating the tags and finding the right people to, for our target audience. It was definitely all a very, very similar process. Mm, okay. So, so what we're talking about here with advertising, then I think, and this is kind of like the way that, that I describe it and, and Brie, you're kind of like validating some of my points. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, but I go. really, yeah, I think advertising is one of those things that kind of like, it's, it's, it's information that you realize, not necessarily that you learn. Like there are definitely certain techniques that you can learn, but a lot of this is really paying attention to your audience and what they're looking for, right? So paying attention to, to what, what, what's going to be, what's going to resonate with, um, with the person that you're trying to attract essentially, right? Yeah, you definitely want to make sure that you're hitting all the notes for all the different type of people because, I mean, you're looking for a target audience, but then within that target target audience, you're also looking out for all the different types of people that could be in there. Mm. So, like, not just the target audience you have in mind, but maybe, like, also a little bit of a stretch, too, is important. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely, because some, like, some people will branch off into different areas and you want to make sure you're kind of pulling all of their eyes in some shape, way, or form. Of course, that's not going to happen for absolutely everything. That would be impossible, but... Right. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to advertise to everyone, right? I think I feel like that's yeah. a lot of... That's um, definitely advertising advice I see, no matter what you're doing. It, it might... You might seem like you want that, that thing that goes out to everyone and that everyone loves, but you don't really want that. Like, you really want to have something that corresponds to the specific niche that you're looking for and the specific type of person that you're looking for. And that's where you're really going to have the most success is, is to niche down. And I know that happens on YouTube too. Like you hear people say like, don't make a YouTube channel that appeals to everyone. You won't ever have success that way. Make a YouTube channel that appeals to a very specific type of person. And I think a lot of times uh, that's true for role plays as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even if at the current role play that you're running that we're all in, it's like you're trying to target the audience that might be into fantasy and space and et cetera, et cetera, like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. So we are definitely going to be referencing the advertisement that we use for our current role play, which Brie is also a part of. <laughs> Uh, yes. Freya's Voyage, yes, which is a space role play, and uh, it's also fantasy and magic and all of that stuff that I always love to have. Um, Thumper, I, I missed it when you said it, but your comment cracked me up. It's a collaborative book that we all write until we get bored and then Karen deletes it. <laughs> yeah, That's uh, so true. I do. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I don't keep my role plays. I don't know what it is about that, but I don't keep them. I, I just delete them when, I, when we're bored of them. <laughs> I'm distressed about that in the future but it'll be all right <laughs> it'll be fine the thing is though is like people that really do care about that they'll like they'll keep logs of their stuff you know yeah, um for sure. so it's not like i delete things without warning like you get you get like a long time <laughs> before the server actually gets deleted <laughs> it's just deleted within the next 24 hours nothing you can do about it guys <laughs> sorry deleting it tomorrow bye <laughs> no usually i get we get people like weeks or like a month <laughs> for sure yep so um when it comes when it comes to advertising i want to get into the specifics though because even though i feel like in general advertising is a skill that you know you realize as opposed to learn there are definitely specific things to learn and i feel like the the structure of the ad is kind of part of that for me so we've gotten we've got a written element we've got a visual element and we've got a call to action so I wanted to speak a little bit about that written element first, and then we'll kind of go from there. So, um, so Brie, I'll kind of touch on this one, and then then you add to that written element, okay? And then we can kind of yeah. swap like that. All right. Perfect. Sounds good. 
Sweet. Okay, so for the written element, when it comes to role plays, the way that I like to think of it is just like you've got your back of the book, right? Like you're in a bookstore, you know, remember bookstores from from the before times <laughs> when we actually went to the store. Um, so yeah, remember yeah. bookstores and you would go to the bookstore and you would like walk down the aisles and like a, a book would catch your eye and you flip it over and read the back. Right, and that was how you'd know if you were going to actually buy that book, like if it was really something that you're interested in. So when we're talking about the written element of a role play, to me, the plot, letting people understand a little bit about what the plot is, is super, super important. And this is gonna be dependent a little bit on the platform that you're on. Some platforms give you more space to write than others. If you have the space to actually post your whole plot summary, I think you should, right? Like, I think you should do that. Yeah, absolutely. That That's going to be the first way to get someone involved. Mm -hmm. Because the plot's like, the plot's the hook, right? And we've talked about this on stream and I have videos on this as well. But the plot is the thing that lets you know, like, if you're really interested, it's the thing that lets you know, like, what your character's going to do during the role play. Yeah. And so that's the yeah. thing that's really going to pull people in. So you've got to, got to have some way for them to read the plot inside of your advertisement. Um, Tumblr, yeah. I think, is a good example where you, you should basically post the whole plot because there's no character limit, right? Yeah, it uh, that was super popular for back when I ran uh, roleplay groups on Tumblr. You had If you didn't post the plot and people had to like click through to go to your blog for the plot, sometimes that was just too much work for them, especially with all the fancy HTML themes like you could have. <laughs> and oh my god, sometimes those blogs were so hard to navigate, so you'd get there, and then it would be like, okay, so where is it? <laughs> Where's, there's all the fancy little hovering bubbles with all the links, but none of them have words beneath them, so you have no idea what you're clicking. Yes, and you have to play hunt for the plot, and it was so yep. annoying. <laughs> so put yes. it in the ad. If you have space, put it in the ad. Um, I think yeah. other another platform that it's that you can put it in the ad very easily is probably like forums. If you're doing very traditional forum style role play, like just put the whole plot in your ad because you're not going to have character limits there, you know? Yeah, you have nothing to lose by putting it in the ad if you can. Yep. Um, Instagram, do they put it do they put it in the ad on Instagram or is it like, you know, that you have to go to the bio to find it? Or Like, I, I guess I don't know what um, the limitations are on Instagram with written stuff. So there, there is a character limit on Instagram, but um, it's super popular to like, you'll have a fancy caption in the actual caption part. And then in the comments below, there'll be like the entire plot line. Some oh. people will link like, there's like card, which is basically like Google Docs, but fancier, I guess. Yeah, um, I have that on my Twitter. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Um, people will link those for plots or even like a Google Docs, but it's mostly just in the comments beneath the post. Okay, got it. So that's how they do it on Instagram. Um, yeah. And then I, I I, think that for, there are platforms where you can't do that, right? Like there are platforms where you can't. So um, for example, uh, Discord has a character limit, right? And a lot of servers will require your advertisement to fit all inside one post. So obviously, if the server is requiring that where you're doing your advertising, then you can't post your whole plot. So um, so then like card, that's a great way to still include it, right? So if you're on something like Discord or Twitter where you have very specific character limitations, that would be my recommendation is to make a card or make a Google Doc that includes your plot and then link it. And that's exactly what we do for our current advertisement, right? Is for the plot, it's very clear and you click the link and then you see the whole plot. And, uh, and that's simply because for a lot of these advertising places, they don't want you to post like two or three posts for your advertisement. They consider that spamming, right? Yeah. Because people don't want to scroll that far. <laughs> No. You know? <laughs> yeah, unless they're interested, they'll come and do that where it's actually located at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So even though in, in general, I'm saying like, don't make people do extra clicks as much as possible. Uh, I definitely recognize that for that written portion, character limits come into play. And sometimes you don't have a choice. You just, you gotta, you gotta link it. So card is a great way to do that. And then Google Docs is my other recommendation for doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Google Docs is super popular on Tumblr. I've noticed that. Yeah, 
I, I'm not yeah. I'm not on there anymore, but I feel like when I left there, Google Docs was still really popular, but Card didn't exist yet, right? So like no. what I see all over Twitter is Card. I don't really see anybody using Google Docs on Twitter, so I don't know. I it, I guess Google Docs has fallen completely out of fashion there. Yeah, that yeah, like on Instagram, Google Docs only started getting popular because um, I mean, a lot of people switch from Instagram to Tumblr, so they're like, oh my god, Google Docs, and then they'll come back and use the Google Doc. Oh, I see, I see. That makes sense. But it was all card. Yeah. Yeah, card is like, is the thing now. And it's really easy. So like, it's for, for those of you guys that don't know what we're talking about, C-A-R-R-D. So if you Google C-A-R-R-D, you'll find what we're talking about. And it essentially lets you set up free single page websites. So you can make like a really pretty um, thing that shows your plot and other information about the role play. I can't use it. I have not figured that one out. I can make a great Google Doc, but card, I cannot function with it. No, um, it did take no. me a while, but I finally, I, I finally feel like I'm pretty good at it. I, uh, I have one linked on the top of my Twitter that has like an advertisement, basically for all of the like where to find me stuff, um, and it's not too bad. Might have to give it another go and see how that works out for me. Yeah, I, I will say though, it's pretty easy to do on a computer, but trying to do some of the edits on their mobile version, I feel like is, is a little bit of a challenge. Obviously people are, are doing it, um, because I know there's a lot of people that use like uh, Discord and Twitter and stuff that are mobile only, but yes. um, so they must be handling it somehow, but I did struggle with the, with the mobile version. So if that's what you're doing, maybe that's why. Yeah, I, I was using my um, phone because I mean, the whole point of Instagram RP for me was that I didn't need my laptop to do anything. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> realizing that I might need it to do that, I was like, you know what, at this point, I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally understandable for sure. Um, so I have a little bit more, I have a little bit more on the written because there's more than just the plot that you want to, that we want to post. But um, do you have anything else to add about having the plot in your advertisement, Brie, before um, I kind of switch to the other stuff that needs to be written? I just think that it's it's probably, like like you said, if you can do it, it's definitely beneficial to have it there because you want joining the RP to be as mm -hmm. easy as a process, as as easy as a process as possible mm -hmm. of a process. So mm -hmm. um, if, if it's there and people can read it while they're scrolling, that's the, the most beneficial option you can have, I guess. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's a reading hobby, right? So you want to give them the stuff to read right up front, because that's yep. primarily what they're going to be doing when they join your role play is reading and writing. So yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. All right. So other stuff that I think needs to be written in advertisements is all of the things that set the tone for what your role play is supposed to be like. So I'll give an example from our current advertisement that we're using. So some of the things that we say in there are para and multi para styles are welcome because those are the styles that we, we tend to have in our role plays. We tend to not get people that one line all the time. Some one lining we have, right? But we don't have a ton of it. So just make that clear up front. If someone is a one liner role player, it's probably not gonna work out. Um, the other next thing we say is third person past tense. Again, this is like setting the tone for the role play. It's not to say that when you come in, you have to do third person past tense. Like it's not a rule in our role play. We're not gonna like bop you for, you know, doing first person or whatever, but it's what most of us are doing. So and nobody wants to be the odd man out, right? Like nobody wants to be the yeah. one person doing first person when everyone else is doing third person. That's Absolutely. awkward. <laughs> cause you know, cause you know, people are reading it and going like, wait, what? And getting confused and probably like silently thinking like, oh my God, why don't they just do third person and stuff like that, right? So even yeah. though it's not a rule, we want to let people know up front because it's just, you know, it's awkward to be the different person. <laughs> um, the next thing is we say long-term RP. So that's to let people know, like, we're really not looking for people that are just, I want to role play this weekend and then I don't, it's whatever after that, right? It's long-term, which means sometimes you have to be patient and wait for things. Things take time in our role play and we expect people to basically be engaged in a long-term sense. So we don't really care about day to day, like if you were active today versus yesterday or anything like that. What we care about is like how active you are overall, like over the course of months and months and months. So we let that be known up front by saying this is a long-term RP. And the next thing we say is relaxed seven day activity limit. So the point of us saying that 
is that to let people know specifically the activity limit is seven days you have to be active once every seven days so like nuts and bolts of it but also the word relaxed what i'm trying to do there is attract people with busy schedules right that don't necessarily feel like they can role play all day every day rapid fire you know so we tend that tends to attract this a lot of like college students and working adults and parents that are busy and get interrupted a lot and things like that um the next thing is ocs and multi-fandom characters welcome so we let people know right off the bat that we are happy to have them adapt whatever characters they have into our setting it's it's not like you come in and you have to pick from this assigned list of characters or anything like that which is um, super important oh yeah for sure um and yeah after i after i finish this brie like feel free to like break down any of these pieces um the next one is 18 plus mature role play let people know there's there's not going to be any teenagers here we're not about that it doesn't fit right for lots of reasons that i can get into if y'all are curious um next thing engaging plot that you help shape so what that means here is we're looking for people who are interested in adding to the plot. Like if you're just kind of here for slice of life, that sort of thing, like that's fine, but that's not really what the role play is designed for. It's really designed for people who are interested in having their character do things that matter, that change things that affect others. And then lastly, lastly, helpful staff. We want to let people know they're welcome to ask questions. They're welcome to give suggestions. They're welcome to do any of that stuff. We are happy to hear it and we'll answer whatever it is that you need answered. And I feel like all of those things, like helping set the tone for your role play is super, super important when it comes to that written information. Because it's not just about the plot. It's also trying to find the type of player that you're looking for. So with all that said, Bree, did you want to break down any of those pieces um, that I talked about or add to that? Um, I did like, like including that you can do multi fandom characters as well as OCs, which I feel like is, um, I've only ever really seen that on Discord. Like that's not super popular anywhere else, which I find really interesting. Oh, really? A lot, yeah. Like on, usually it's like OCs only because they don't want any crossovers and they don't want people to feel like, oh, well they did this kind of character, but I wanted to do this character. Oh, like, that's so interesting. Other platforms are so competitive, so it it's it does not usually work like that. Oh but gosh. I think I think it's really cool to, to include that because sometimes like some people have muse is a fickle thing sometimes. So you want to make sure you're able to attract a lot of people that will feel comfortable bringing in someone that maybe they've written for so and so amount of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean I that's important that, to me for sure. Like I don't I don't want to be told that like hey this character that I've written forever. I don't, you're not allowed to adapt them to this to this game if you yeah. know that would suck yeah <clears throat> yeah it really would it, i mean i know s even for me sometimes like i've mm. taken other characters and adapted them some of the characters that i write in freya are they're ocs but they're adapted from things that i've writ wrote in the past mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. yeah i mean i do the same thing with my ocs and with my fandom characters you know they they all get adapted um into the into whatever the new world is yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, go for it. Sorry, sound like you're about to say something. Oh no, I was I was just con like confirming, I guess. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, Lunar says I work twelve hour shifts, so rapid fire is nearly impossible for me while I work, and I usually get left behind. Yeah, and I think that a lot of role players are in that situation, and so like if your role play is rapid fire. Um, then I think that you need to put in your advertisement something like highly active role play or something like that so that people joining know that is the mode and that is the expectation. Because what you don't want your advertisement to do is attract someone that is not at all a fit for your role play. That's, su that's a waste of your time and it's a waste of their time too. So you want to get in these situations. You don't want to get in these situations where someone joins their role play. They are really excited about it, but they're they're really excited about something that doesn't exist. <laughs> some idea yeah, that they've made in their false head. Hopes. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So some idea they've made in their head that's like that's not what your role play is about. You know. Yeah, you you want to make sure people have like the right idea going into it. Otherwise, it's not going to work out, and then you're going to be left with one player down, which nobody wants to see the RP go down. But sometimes that's what happens when you're not putting like 
out into the world exactly what you're looking for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and it can kind of seem like sometimes that, oh, but I want to attract as many people as possible. That's how I'm going to have a super active role play is to have like a hundred players and all this stuff. And it's like, but that doesn't mean anything because no matter what you do, at least this is my experience, no matter what you do, 80% of your activity is going to come from 20% of your players. Period. That's how it is. That's how every roleplay I've ever run is. That's how every roleplay I've ever been in is. You're not going to... having So having more people doesn't necessarily make it more active. It just makes it faster because there's more people, right? You're still only getting most of your activity from 20% of your players, no matter how many you have. Yeah, it, it kind of comes into like almost a sense of like quality versus quantity. Yes. Type of thing. Like you want to make sure you have the right players but ha having a lot of them doesn't necessarily mean they're the right one exactly exactly so when i see these like hundred you know people role play servers and things like that it like makes me wonder you know they must not have activity requirements because i have no idea how moderators could possibly keep up with knowing if a hundred people are active like that seems like so impossible to me <laughs> i don't know yeah, Bri, have you ever been in that insane. type of role play <laughs> um um I'm trying to think. I know one of my role plays. We there's probably like fifty of us, mm -hmm. and that that was insane enough. I couldn't imagine any more. But like our, I can't say that it was being moderated to the best either. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gave it our best effort, but. Oh my gosh, I couldn't keep up with 50. Like, um, I think I feel like I would just totally lose track of everything that was going on and, and all of my players and stuff. And like, things would slip under the radar. I feel like that's what would happen to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we were all like 14, 15, 16. I'm like, I don't know what we thought we were doing or trying to accomplish, but like... <sighs> Oh my god. Oh, we I feel like um though that's the perfect age to to be trying to do a role play like that. We all have we all have big um grand plans when we're teenagers, right? <laughs> yeah, and we have all the time in the world to do it. Exactly, because you don't have real responsibilities. I mean, you have like school, so I don't want to say like you have no responsibilities, but you don't have real responsibilities. Like nothing is really really bad is going to happen to you um if you like neglect school for a day or something like that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like the homework will still be there but like your job isn't gonna be there if you keep not going to your job exactly like if i <laughs> cut if i cut work to role play that means eventually i will not have work <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then you'll be back to square one <laughs> exactly oh my gosh so yeah, um, it cracks me up, right? It cracks me up. But I feel like the only times that I've been in massive role plays like that, I've never run one, right? But was when I was a teenager, right? And I had all the time in the freaking world. So it's a bit different when you get to be an adult. But I think even if you are a teenager and you're running role plays like that, it's still good to make it clear in your advertisement that that's what the role play is. Like that's what it is, that's who you're looking for and that's who you want to attract, you know? Because you yeah, don't absolutely. want somebody you don't, in that type of role play, you don't want somebody that's got a job that's not actually going to give your role play that kind of rapid fire attention. They're not going to fit in. It's not going to work. No, yeah. And we would be writing threads in like a hours time. So mm -hmm. it's like, it, it just wouldn't have worked if somebody came in and wanted like to spend, you know, a week fleshing out a thread. Like that's just, that was not it. They'd be left behind in and the matter of three hours. Yeah, yeah, everybody else would be moved on and they would be like, oh my God, I didn't even finish my first thread, you know? Yep. <clears throat> it would feel really silly, probably. I don't know. Um, yeah, I feel like I, I feel like if I joined a role play like that now, I would feel really silly. Yeah, I, w I would have no idea what to do, even as like an independent role player on Tumblr when people like, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still doing it, so you must be doing something right, right? right and very slowly <laughs> <laughs> yep um so okay so i feel like that's that's good with the written pieces so um brie why don't you take the beginning of this one so we also need a visual element in our in our role play advertisements so so what advice do you have for that and, and what does that mean also so i mean kind of to start like you did visuals are important in the way that like a mesmerizing book cover is in the bookstore you Typically, at least for me, going to the bookstore and picking out a book starts with the cover, and thus I know what I'm going for. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the difference is, I guess, especially because we're, our hobby is basically online, 
a lot of the times you're just scrolling and scrolling through tags trying to find the right advertisement but the first thing they're going to see when they're constantly scrolling potentially fast um is the pretty graphic edit that they're that grasps their attention so it's it it starts with an interesting image um the the process can be different it it all depends on what your role play is about so for instance like freya there's a lot it's it's space so of course you're gonna get you have the pretty like stars and etc like that so it all starts with the image, I think, at least for me, that's how I would go through a tag on Tumblr or something like that, is looking at the images, because there's no way I can read 50 long plots, and then I I'd be confused. Yeah, bingo, right? Like, if you're looking for a role play, you only have so much time that you want to dedicate to each advertisement, because um, there's only so much there's only so much time that you can put in because you're busy. So yeah. it is about the visual, whether we want it to be or not. Like... We are, humans are visual creatures, right? Like we can't, we can't get away from that. Um, even though it's like, well, it's about writing. I shouldn't have to make pretty graphics. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, but human brains don't work that way. Um, you know, it's not fair. It's not fair that in a writing hobby to attract people, you have to find someone or be good at graphics. It's, it's fundamentally not fair, but it's true. Um, so I've got a fun little, a fun little theory. And, uh, and Brie, tell me if, uh, if you think I'm like out in left field or if this is legit, but <laughs> okay. Get us with it. I believe, I believe that a huge reason Twilight got so popular is because you walk by it in the store and you see this like, this like beautiful cover that's like the, the very black background, the very white hands, and they're holding like that red, red apple. From a graphic design perspective, that cover is stunning, right? I, I do not believe that that book would have gone on to be as crazy popular as it was without that cover like i really believe that it caught on because so many people walked by it in the store and it was like oh oh what's that and they pick it up and they flip it over and they're like oh sexy teenage vampires cool that's my jam let me get that you know <clears throat> yeah for sure the it, it all starts with a cover or in this case like a graphic edit or on other platforms a theme Yep. It, it kind of all starts there to attract the visual eye because like you said humans are visual creatures that's mm -hmm. just ingrained in us yep we can't help it and even if you think like well i don't pay attention to the graphics like you do though even if it's not consciously like you are subconsciously paying attention to them and you are going to be more interested if something looks pretty so like on discord i'll put in i'll put emojis in our advertisement in addition to the you know banner image that goes above it, right? Just as just more yeah. things to catch your eye. That's why like on Tumblr, people would get really popular that just that did like those aesthetic posts, you know, that was like all symbols oh, wow. and it was like, where's yes. the words? <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. It, and it would get so popular. Even, <clears throat> no, it really would. And it was, I remember so many popular Tumblr accounts that when I look at it, they, they weren't really producing a lot of writing. They weren't really doing much but they were aesthetically pleasing to look at they were posting mm -hmm. constantly different types of edits they were breaking the boundaries on edits and so it it really all the, their popularity came from the fact that they had a pretty looking block or yep. a pretty looking tag system mm -hmm. like they were good at photoshop or or they like always whenever they did post text it was it was like you know that's more symbols than <laughs> than letters oh. and it just it looks so beautiful to scroll through and so people would follow it and then like and i even got sucked into a lot of those and it was like wait where's the role play where like yeah. why am i pining after this person that literally never role plays like what what <laughs> but i got sucked into it too no yeah that's the entirety of instagram rp is just editing there, there's no writing really which is i mean partly like i i go to instagram rp for being able to explore different graphic editing styles because that's what it is on Inst Instagram is mainly photo based so when you're posting like your advertisement it's a promotion for your page but if it's not pretty no one's going to click your page right that's and I assume I assume on Instagram it's kind of like Twitter in the sense that the actual role play if there is any happens in the DMs right so you're really yeah. just trying to attract people into sliding into your DMs <laughs> no yeah um there's the occasional like you can make an edit again you're making an edit to serve the purpose of the writing mm -hmm. and then beneath it in the comments you can make 
you can write your plot, but there, there's no way to go about doing something on there without editing. So editing in itself has become an, an, an essential component in role playing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I feel like Twitter's the same way because of the because of the the text limit, right? Because of the text yep. limit, you can't really role play on there. Um, so so you kind of fall into a lot of the same the same situation where the role play is really about posting cute head cannons or fan art or you know or edits or things like that and then the role play itself happens in the DMs right yeah, yeah where... i sorry go ahead oh no you're you're fine you're fine yeah I, I mean i didn't really i don't really write on twitter that much but it, again yeah it it all comes down to having a nice theme and um they're their bios and like locations and stuff there's a certain way you have to do them because again the more aesthetically pleasing it looks the more likely you're going to gain followers which means the little bit of writing that will go on is going to be based on the fact that your page looked nice yep exactly exactly um so i feel like the other thing with visuals that um that i really struggle with that um, and I don't know if you have if you have something for this as well is like this the graphic design element of putting it together. So I want to share with everybody just a little bit that uh, that I cheat, I hardcore cheat, and the way I cheat is with Canva. Uh, Canva is like the most awesome graphic making thing in the freaking world. It has like a gajillion templates, and I know this sounds like an ad, but it's not. Like I really just love Canva. Um, <laughs> Um, so, you know, I'm not big enough for advertisements, but hey, Canva, if you want to, I freaking love your stuff. Um, Reach out. <laughs> yeah. So it has like, it has like templates for literally whatever dimensions you want for anything you want. It's freaking amazing. So if you're like me and you feel like graphic design is super hard and yet sometimes you have to do it, then my recommendation would be go check out Canva. It will save your life. It has saved mine many many times when i just could not make something that i had to go make and uh and now and and when i use that they'll have like a template that uh, that i'm like oh well that looks good i can just swap the colors on this and perfect boom advertisement made so that would be my recommendation if you're like me and struggles with this type of stuff and canva's not the only one there are other there are other ones too that's just the one i like but go find one of these graphic making websites and use their templates from there. Do not try to reinvent the wheel. There is no point in that. I make mine from scratch, but the one the <laughs> app that, <laughs> the app that I do use does have templates on it too. It's called Pixar. Oh yeah, that's a good one for if you're for your mobile people. Yeah. Yeah. I I use Pixar religiously. I have I mean you have to go get your own textures from Pinterest, you have to find your filters for your phone, or you can use Photoshop on your phone for PSDs, but like, it's all, it's a whole process. Yep, that's a really good one. I, I have used that before too. Um, it has a really nice skin smoothing feature for your photos. <laughs> yes, it does. It works really, really well. Yep. <clears throat> I'm trying to think if there's any others that I think are particularly good. Um, nothing, none of them come to mind, but essentially, essentially, like, basically what I'm trying to say is, yes, Brie maybe makes all of her own graphics, but a lot of people don't do that, and you don't have to. And I think, I think role players sometimes feel like, oh, but it's not authentic if I take this and that from other people or whatever, and I'm just here to tell you, as I've said in many other contexts, that's not true. Like, steal, steal, steal. Um, you know, it's, it's not wrong to find someone else's template and then edit from that template. It's totally, perfectly normal. Yeah, even, I mean, I make my own edits, but like, I'm not, I'm seeing other people's edits. I'm looking at inspiration and I'm going from there. Mm hmm Like, ins inspiration and copying are not the same thing. No, they're not. They're not the same thing at all. Just, you know, copying would be like saving that specific edit and then posting it without any credit, right? What yeah. I'm talking about is like, oh, that style or that layout or that color choice, that's so nice. I'm going to do the same thing on my graphic. Like, that's not copying. Like, that's inspiration, you know, and that's, no. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I think the art, like the RP community, at least on other platforms, I'm not too sure how it is fully on Discord, but... um they get so tied up in that and they're like, oh, well, I created this color palette. And I'm like, you, 
in the 20, 2020 to 21 <laughs> made this color palette out of the goodness of your brain. Like, I don't think so. <laughs> You're the first person ever to come up with this color palette in all of human history. Yeah, sure. Whatever you say, friend. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, they'll try to, like, claim the font. Like, oh, I used Times New Roman on this, so you can't do that. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, what are we doing? It's I When I read those takes, I'm like, this must be a teenager. There's no way. They are. There must they be, are. right? Because, like, in the, in the real like working world right like if I spent hours coming up with something that was 100% unique on my own my boss would be so mad at me like she would be like Karen why are you wasting your time like what the hell like you why didn't you just google that you could have spent 10 minutes on it instead of spending an hour like what's wrong with you you know like that that would be the conversation like she would think like that something that that something got messed up right that she's like did I not did I not communicate the assignment properly like that's the conversation we'd be having so like it's just not a thing it's just not a thing in the adult working world yeah like time management are yes. you going to spend eight hours trying to rack your brain for something that you know someone might look at and think is pretty for maybe 10 seconds no that's stupid <laughs> like it, it makes no sense but yep. I mean I, that's that's just the way that role play has been and I mean but there's no one out there that's creating something 100% original in roleplay. Like, we are literally reading and seeing other people's things. Yep. And whether you, people care to admit it or not, you got inspiration from somewhere. Absolutely. That's just how memory works. I made a, I made a video on that. If y'all are curious, if y'all are hearing this, I'm like, I don't know, this sounds sus. Um, I made a video about um, uniqueness is killing your creativity, I think is what that video is called. You can go find it on my channel. And, uh, and that has like a bunch of uh, sciencey stuff behind why that is just such a silly concept. So um, go check that out if, you, if you're listening to this and like, I don't know, this doesn't sound right to me. Um, go check that one out. <laughs> um, what it's actually called that. Yeah, I think it's, pretty, I think it's <laughs> called that. Yeah, it's something like that. I, I'm close. I know I'm close to the title. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm trying to think, is there anything else on the visual that we want to touch on? I feel like we mostly covered it. Is there any anything else you can think of, Bree? I mean, there, there's Pinterest, which I think is something newer. Uh, not Pinterest, not, not Pinterest itself is newer, but I feel like having a Pinterest board to reflect, like, the Discord server, for instance, it, that's a newer um, feature that I'm not quite familiar with, but a lot of people do use Pinterest to, like, get their aesthetic needs across. Oh, yeah, yeah. We do that, actually. Um, so that's a good point. One of the things that we include in our advertisements and also as inspiration in the role play is a Pinterest board. And the reason why is because in, when you're trying to communicate like the mood of the role play or like what the what the technology level is like, what the clothing is like, um, things like that, I find it much, much easier to communicate that through a Pinterest board than to describe it, right? Like it's one thing to say, oh, the technology is sort of Bronze Age-ish. Um, and then, and that like says one thing, but you don't necessarily know what knowledge someone comes into your role play already having in their mind. Uh, they might not really fully know what that means. Like they're, the idea of what that means, they might have the wrong idea of what that means. But if you give them a Pinterest board that shows a bunch of like Bronze Age tools and swords and armor, and things of that nature, and you communicate it that way, you've given them a visual reference, which they're going to be able to much more quickly assimilate into their understanding and uh, and be able to accurately then put that back out into the role play that they're that they're writing. So like, for example, when it comes to when it comes to Freya, we have a whole bunch of Pinterest boards for the different areas of the ship and what those different areas are like and yes we have descriptions for all of those locations too but that doesn't communicate it in the way that a pinterest board does like brie um maybe you can comment a little bit on how you felt reading it versus looking at the pinterest board i know it's a totally different experience but because i'm in the process of helping make it right naomi's the main one that makes them these in our role plays but because i'm part of the process of making it maybe i um i can't really explain the what it looks like looking in so yeah. maybe if you could comment yeah I, I mean i think you versus you making it you obviously have the idea in your head but i think looking at it definitely helped at least me be able to like accurately describe what i'm trying to describe in a thread because that that's important i mean part, part of role play is imagination but you want to be cohesive as a mm -hmm. group that, that's kind of the point of group role play 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same thing as why when it comes to like one-on-one -on -one role play, I tell people like, I do think it's important to have some kind of reference for what your character looks like, even if what your character looks like is not important to you, like having a, some art for it, having a face claim, having, um, you know, a, a description or whatever, it is important for your partner to be imagining the same thing that you're imagining, even if you don't think it's that important. Um, I think it still is personally. Yeah, I mean, even in the like the art gallery tag, having something that you can go and you can post a picture of, like, this is what my character's wearing, helps to visually translate to the entire group what's going on. Yep. Yep, for sure. So I think I think Pinterest is very helpful in that sense, and it, it was not popular back when I ran groups, so it, it's a nice um, added touch. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't know if it's popular. I know we do it, right? But um, but y'all let y'all tell me. Anybody watching this video, like when it goes up on the VOD, or anybody in the chat, like if y'all do that for your groups. Um, I mean, I'm a big fan of it, but I really don't know if it's popular or not, or if it's just something that that we do. I want to say that Naomi even was the one that came up with it when we first started doing the role plays, because we moved from Tumblr, which was so image based, so we could just post the images right yes. like there and it was like well wait how do we visually communicate this we don't have a way anymore on discord what do we do <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah yeah we we did it i mean me naomi and summer had pinterest boards for our three on three role play so yeah we've been doing that forever but in terms of actually yeah. seeing it in the role play community as a whole um your guys's rps are the first ones that i've seen do it well everyone should start doing it new trend New trend. Jane? Everybody start doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Jane says she always goes to the boards first. Oh, yeah. Um, I can totally see why. I can totally see why. Oh, hey, yeah, hey, Rose. Um, Lantern Rose. That's Ivory Rose, right? Is that you? Or are you a new person? Well, if you're new, welcome. If you're Ivory Rose, hey, Rose, how's it going? <laughs> there you go. Two different answers for whoever you are. Uh, yes, that's me. Oh, perfect. Good. I guessed right. So Rose says, um, the groups women don't always use Pinterest, but they do have aesthetic channels or picture songs and other things going to help people understand the tone and themes better. Yeah, I think that totally works as well. Doing it via a channel if you're not a fan of Pinterest, same exact type of idea for the same reasons, right? For sure. Yep. Um, okay, so I think that's, that's good. So I think we basically covered the visual then. So we can move to the next thing, which is a call to action. So this is the last but most important part of your advertisement is your call to action. So what you don't want is someone to read your advertisement and then they're like, this sounds so cool. And they can't find the link to click to actually join. Like that is devastating. Uh, it's kind of like, I see this on Twitter a lot. So to kind of put this in context, it's kind of like when I see somebody on Twitter talking about their book and I'm like, their book sounds so cool. And then there is no link in the tweet. Like, why? Why do I have to go to your page and st struggle to find the tweet that includes the link that act to actually buy your book? Like, it should be, if you're talking about your book, you should be linking your book. Same thing with your role play. If you're talking about your role play, you should be linking your role play. Whether that's like a main blog that people go to, whether that's linking like the application to fill out to join, whether that's linking the, the Discord link, like whatever it is for whatever your platform is, if your advertisement does not include that, all the work that you've put into your ad is now irrelevant. So you have to have to include that call to action. Um, nobody is going to DM you <laughs> to find oh your role, your, your link to your role play. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. Um, you know, it's it, it, it can it can seem like that. It, you know, in some platforms it's normal, right? But if that's normal on your platform, okay, your call to action is then DM for for link, right? Or DM for whatever. Uh, but you still have to tell them. You still have to tell them. So I just I get so frustrated sometimes with uh, with different uh, role play, with different role play advertisements, and then they don't tell you how to go find the role play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it goes back to wanting the process to be easy for people. If, it, if it's difficult, people are less likely to join. And yep. sometimes people aren't going to make those extra few clicks to figure something out because by that point, they're already confused. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. So they're already, they're already done with you at that point. They're already done with you. Um, and they're like, okay, well, they made it hard for me. Why would I want to join their role play? I'm moving on. My time is valuable. 
right? You don't want you don't want anyone joining your role play to ever feel like their time was not valued because they could be doing literally anything else but joining your role play. There are uh, role plays are free to set up, which means there are a gajillion freaking role plays out there. So you never want anyone to feel like, well, I could have spent that time elsewhere. Yeah, for sure. Time, especially when you're even like, especially as an adult, which a lot nowadays there are a lot of adults role playing. Mm -hmm. Time is very valuable, and you don't want people to feel like they need to spend all this extra time doing something. Yep, it's like you know, they got better things to do, and it's not just role play, right? Like they could be doing literally anything else. Uh, they don't even exactly. they don't have to role play. Period. Yeah, it's a hobby in the end. So. Yep. Exactly. But I, I even with the book advertising, um, we did a lot of it through Facebook and Instagram, which I guess was, um, I was doing it pre the book coming out, so there wasn't necessarily a link to go and buy the book. Mm -hmm. But people could immediately resort back to the Facebook page and the Instagram page by clicking the post itself so th that made it simple for that because mm -hmm. then it's like oh here's the place i follow for more updates great yes exactly yep. yep so you want that like it's the same thing it's the same thing for anything you know if i'm if i'm tweeting something about a, a video like a youtube video and i don't link that youtube video like that's silly like I've I've now lost out on on people that might want to watch that video because like hell they're gonna go to my channel and actually go like find the video you know what I mean so um, it's just it's just you just don't want to just don't make it hard for people you know just don't make it hard for people at the end of the day that's really what the call to action is about make sure that inside your advertisement you have not given them like extra steps to be able to go try to join your role play. Yeah, it even it's even like if you have character lists, like including the character list link, so that people will know one who they can apply for, two where to apply, and three where to find all the necessary information that they need in order to be able to apply. Yep, I think that's really important for like fandom canon role plays. You yeah. know, like if you're looking for if you're looking for a role play in a particular fandom, you want to know like is my favorite character already taken? Yes. Can I actually um, apply for them or not? Yeah, uh, I did a lot of, b back when I ran groups, there was, we, the mods and admins, would actually write the OC character bios. There was no, we didn't have where people could, could come in and make their own character. The bios were all up there. You can, you're free to do what you want with them after. Mm. But we needed to set, like, set a, like, an actual biography that gave them something to work with. Yep. So did y'all did y'all do full bios or did you do like skeletons? Oh, I'm no, just curious. We, we, we did whole bios. It was whole um, bios. I mainly ran like mob RPGs, so we yeah. would literally like there were there were set families, there were set people in that family. The um, like the people who weren't really necessarily tied to a certain family. So we wrote full bios, and then people could continue to do on what they wanted with the character through the RP. But anything leading up to the RP was written out. Mm. I mean, that makes sense, right? Because you have to have the family structured a certain way. So yeah, if you have like a bio role play like that, I do think it's super important to like advertise what characters are open, what characters you're looking for, right? And make sure that you that you have links and stuff to those characters in the advertisements. Yeah, because if you don't, then people are going to go, they're going to look at the application and they're going to be like, what do you mean? What is the, like, who is this character? What am I supposed to do with that? When yeah, they, it's going to be very confusing. They, <laughs> yeah, so we, we always had to list our, our full character lists and make sure they were tagged accordingly so people could find them according to family, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Okay, so... I want to also make sure that today we talk about retention. Um, is there anything else you have to say on advertising? I feel like I've kind of I've kind of got out everything that I wanted to say um, before we move on. No, yeah, I'm. I definitely think we covered the the basis of it. Okay, gotcha. So for retention, we have a lot of things in my role plays that we do that are specifically designed to retain people. So I'll give an example. Um, application acceptance. So for the way that we run our role plays, you have to 
create your character somewhat. So we have skeleton bios, and what those are is you you get like just a short blurb about the character, and then you have to design the rest of them. Or you can just design your character from scratch. Either way is fine, but we don't have anything where we have like a full bio, right, that you apply for. And part of the reason that I don't run full bio role plays anymore is because the act of going through that application process and putting your character together kind of ties you to that character. It makes you like really invested in them. So then guess what? You're more likely to stay in the role play, right? <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> yes. I mean, it gets to the point, like in the way that I've talked about this in videos before, but the way that we do our acceptance, right? We don't reject anybody, but you do get notes. And we have had people that were so invested in a character concept that just wasn't going to work. And um, that, uh, that when they got their notes back and they realized like how much they had to change, they were just like, never mind, I don't want to do that character anymore. Like just writing the application gets you that tied in to it sometimes you know um so i strongly recommend if you're having retention problems to have a full application process where people have to describe who their character is they have to describe their history they have to describe their personality they have to describe how that character fits into the role play and what they plan to do with that character all of that stuff because just the act of them having to think of it is going to help them be more interested in the role play in the long run um, Free, what was your experience like? What's what's your experience like, like filling out an application? Like, does that happen to you? Um, fill, yeah, I mean, definitely, filling out the application is part of is one of the most important parts because, like you said, I you get attached to the character that you're planning to write, but um, applications in itself are usually there's one. I get stressed for writing them, but they're the reason <laughs> I end up staying to do it. Yeah. And that's kind of how I know if I want to write the character. Like, if I'm going to go through with the process, I I'm in it. Mm hmm Well, let's talk about that, because I think that would be good for people, for people that are running role plays that might be struggling with retention. Um, they, that might be good for them to know. So can you expand on that, what you mean by, like, struggling with the application itself? I think okay. I I think the hardest part for me is obviously I want to blend in with, I want to make a character that makes sense for the plot line, mm -hmm. but I also want to make a character that's going to be interesting to the other characters that are already in the role play because making a character and then having it not work out kind of fails in the sense of retaining the character. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I always personally get a little stressed out that my character isn't going to work the way I want them to. But, um, and even just like, I'm considering I used to write bios all the time for my role plays. Bio writing is not my expertise. That's surprising, I, since you did them so much before. <clears throat> I know, I think it was easier because like, I wasn't going to be writing those characters. So uh. writing a character that I, that I'm personally going to write is a little more stressful for me. Mm. In the sense that, like, I I want it to really work. And I think it was easier back then, too, because I had a major hand in creating the plot line. So I kind of had the, the full picture. Oh, okay. So it was more about, what like... what could be done and what couldn't. Okay, so it's more about, like, what if my... What if what I'm imagining this role play to be turns out to be wrong? <laughs> yeah. Thank God for Naomi. Naomi... <laughs> I could resort back to her any time I had a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, um, so I know I, I think that this is this is part of what like having having a good mod team I think really helps here, um, because you know everybody's going to bond differently with different people. But if people can find at least one of your mods that they're comfortable with, I think that helps a lot with kind of this piece of the retention process. Oh, Jane has a really long comment. Let's read it. Um, just adding to my experience in character, Karen servers, each thing, job bio, etc., all makes me read the lore and then find where they fit in before story start, as where as well as where I see them fit when we start. Then there's no question where and how they can jump into the RP. You talk about this in your YouTube video, and it's very real. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you for for mentioning that, Jane. Um, yeah, I think it's important. It's important when you're designing your application 
to have something like job or role on there because if you don't this is what's going to happen people are going to make nothing characters that do nothing and then they're going to wonder why the hell they're bored in their in your rp and it's because they didn't do anything to help themselves get invested and sometimes that's out of nervousness like brie i think you you talked about that right like it'd be much easier to write an application if i didn't ask you all of those things, right? Like if I don't make yep. you put put in a job and, and you know, and a bio and da 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 da. Like if I just ask you very basic, like what's your character's name, face, claim, and gender? You know, if it was just like that, it would be really easy and no problem to fill out the the application. But then you're not invested, and then you join, and it's like, oh, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and. I mean, I feel, I feel like that would almost be more stressful because then you're going to get it in and everyone's going to be, you're all simultaneously going to be confused, which does not make for fun writing when you're just confused. Because mm -hmm. then you spend all this time worrying because you don't have anybody's bios to go read to know like how they can fit in. Like I get so, I get so inspired when we have new people, right? Because it's like, oh, can I fit this character into this other character's plot and da 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 da. You know, like recently I brought in um, Viv, Vivian to the, to the role play because uh, I wanted to do more of my ship with Marina. We have you know, Vivana as a ship, but I need more for her, right? So when I saw like uh, Zine bring in Gabriel, for example, and you know he was like, "Oh, this character is going to run a cult." I was like, "Oh man, that is perfect." There we go. Viv's <laughs> plot done. I got it. <laughs> uh, so that always makes me so inspired to see what you guys do and what you guys kind of decide from those characters. Yeah, um, when I brought in my second character, I was super excited to be able to go through and realize, like, hey, she can, um, Alicia can communicate with hey, Dean, per se, because he, he's a Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. So finding all the, the characters that I could interweave into her, like, into threads with her was um, a fun process. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's that's for a lot of people. And I know it, what it means is like, it's more work, right? So to kind of go back to some of the, the things that I was saying before, like you might think you want a role play that appeals to, you know, everyone and their mom. But what you end up with when you have that kind of role play is that it ends up appealing to no one. And this is kind of the point, right? Like I've definitely had people that come in and they feel like the application is too much work. They don't want to do it, but they're like, but I still want to join the role play. And it's like, but no, you don't, because then you're not the kind of person that we're that we're looking for. And, uh, you know, we get feedback about things like, you know, your role plays would be easier to join if you did this, that and the other. And it's like but I kind of don't want it to be easy to join. You know what I mean? I kind of want yeah. it to be like a little bit of a challenge because if it's a little bit of a challenge, not too much, right? Like not crazy, but if it's a little bit of a challenge, then I know that we're only getting people that are actually invested. Yeah, I mean, if it, like I said, if the process was easy, one, I feel like it would be more stressful and two, I, I wouldn't be invested and odds are a lot of other people wouldn't be. And then where's the role play gonna go from there? Yeah, I mean, then you're all just kind of sitting around having coffee all day, which like that's fun to do sometimes, but you can't have every thread be that. That's boring. <laughs> yeah, you, you want some sort of content in there and something that makes you want to continue to write. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like, I don't know if you were if you were in um, the Tumblr group RP scene during this time, uh, but uh, but there was a huge trend for Apples role plays, right? And oh God, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I never understood it. I never understood it. Like I tried to join some to kind of see what all the hype was about. Why was everybody so into these? And the conclusion I came to is they actually weren't. They were not into role playing in these games. What they were into is the fact that they could apply and get in. And it was like just just the idea of applying and being able to try out a role play without committing at all was the appeal. When you actually got in the role play, for the most part, now this wasn't true for all of them, of course, but for the most part, people weren't actually role playing. They were just kind of, you know, dicking around. Um, sometimes they were they were there because they wanted to ship certain face claims. And so they were like, oh, this role play has somebody playing such and such character. So I'm going to join and see if I can do a ship with them with this face claim, right? But that yes. was about the extent. That was like the about to, about the extent of actual roleplay that I saw in these servers, you know. Yeah, uh, Instagram is like that too, where like they'll they'll set up their the RPG on its own separate page, and then they'll be like, "All right, everyone, go make an account, post a fancy edit, and put beneath it who your face name is, and maybe their job role or something like that." And then you know what? You're accepted. 
And I'm like, and within two weeks, the role play is non-existent. Everyone yep. is tired. They're bored. They've moved on to a different account. Yep. And Absolutely. there's that. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the thing too, is like, yes, that that's a very easy role play to set up and it doesn't take you much time as the admin, which is great. You know, I mean, I'm lazy too. I don't want to spend a lot of time, but the thing is, is if you spend that little amount of time and your application process, then your role play is not going to last any time at all. And, uh, and to me at this point in my life, to me, that's a waste of my time. So I'm not going to spend that time doing that. Maybe when I was a teenager, it didn't matter you know, that I wasted a bunch of time doing a role play that only lasted two weeks, but now it kind of matters. Yeah, I, I mean, hey, maybe now that I'm in lockdown, I'll take another experience at this place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, right? <laughs> you want to go? Why not? I got all the time to waste. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, for sure. But that, I mean, that won't be, that won't be true forever, right? It, it won't be too long okay, before no. that's not true anymore. Yeah. But it, it happens and that's, what a lot even to this day and i think they still exist on tumblr too I'm, i don't really role play in groups on tumblr but i'm pretty sure atlas role plays are like a hit thing because role play nowadays is not really as much about the writing as it used to be mm -hmm. uh the platforms i think the platforms shape it a lot you know the yeah. the the things that happen on tumblr very much shape the role play scene whereas back in the day like forums was it there was no social media so of course it had to be all about the writing because there was nothing else nothing else existed you know yeah so yeah even, even like chatsy good old chatsy back then oh. it was about the writing because there was nothing else it was just a chat room <laughs> you couldn't do anything yeah <laughs> there was nothing else to do but put words so that's all anyone yeah. ever did Yep. Oh my gosh, I remember that. I mean, do you remember Neat Chat? I remember using oh this for, oh, for out of character. The Neat Chat was always the out of character room in the Tumblr role yep. plays. <laughs> I so remember that. Or oh like, my gosh. I, don't, I don't even remember how you could do it, but you could make like a separate, like, I think it was like a private blog and you would have like the OOC group chat and you would have to refresh the page to see what other people said. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that too. We would have both. So we would have like the OOC for, it would be like slow. And then we would have like the neat chat that was like the actual chat room where everyone was yep. really talking, you know? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. It good really times. was. Mm -hmm. Now it's all chat rooms that we're all on Discord, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all just talking 24-7. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, application process. It might seem like a chore to set up a good application and to provide all the information to pe for people to fill out bios, but it's going to make them stay. So I am a huge proponent of, uh, of doing exactly that. Um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was, ju I was just saying yes. Yeah. So the next thing that I want to touch on briefly is... Um, the uh, the idea of starter calls. So Discord, we do this a certain way on Discord, but you can kind of modify this to work in lots of places, right? So on Discord, the way that we do starter calls is we have a channel called Plot and Starter Calls, right? And what people have to do is they have to write in that channel, hey, um, you know, emoji this for a starter, and then other people leave them emojis, right? And in Discord, you can see exactly who emojied for uncertain posts, and then you know, oh, well, I need to go write a post for this person and do a thread with this person, because they emojied my starter call. So the reason why we do this is because you have got to give people an easy way to interact with each other. If you make that process hard, then say they get through the application process, right? But you make it hard for them to find people to actually role play with, like you don't have a system for that. What's gonna happen then is they're gonna get themselves all nervous about doing actual interactions and then you've lost them there. So they've spent all this time on the application, they're excited for this character, and then they're like, oh, but I am so nervous to actually message people to try to get interactions that I just give up on the role play at this point. So you have to give people some kind of easy system to start interactions with their fellow role players. Yes. Um, I can touch on that more when I do the the why like we're going to do the why people leave section but yeah i definitely have something to put in there yeah well i mean go ahead like if it fits now let's talk about it oh. right all right yeah. yeah um i think for me one of like a big thing is like 
anxiety and having nervous energy to actually reach out to communicate to people. Mm -hmm. Um, So when even starter calls, like sometimes, like if you're not feeling the starter, there's always going to be some sort of starter call you can go go in, like which leads to communication, which I find is super beneficial because on other platforms sometimes that's not the case. And if you're not making starter calls, you're not going to write. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So having it having it all there where they all are is super beneficial. Yeah, and I think so. I, I think that, uh, you know, the way we do it on Discord works really well for Discord, right? But you can modify mm-hmm. this. So on on Tumblr, this was so easy. So this is kind of how we adapted this. Because on Tumblr, what you could do is you could have like opens, right, that you would post that anyone could respond to. But on Discord, it's really hard to do that, like, because it's really just like a chat room. <laughs> so that's kind of a challenge to just throw something out there and say anyone can respond. And it's like, When you do that on Discord, because it's a chat room, what ends up happening is no one responds, right? Because no one wants to be like the one person that takes up your your time and and no one else gets to have it. So you have to modify it, right? Yeah, then you'd get like, or even you'll have multiple people trying to respond in the same like channel and you'll get too many people, which leads to confusion. Oh yeah, and then it's like crazy chaos, right? And you're like, what's going on? Oh my God. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think, and I, I think it really depends. Like it depends on the platform, right? Exactly how you do this. But the the starter call system that we use in Discord, and also the way we used to do it on Tumblr with opens, uh, this is this is something that, at least to my knowledge, does not seem to exist on like Instagram role play, which is why I get like. I get like so confused about what actually happens on Instagram roleplay. Like where the actual, where does roleplay, where does it happen? Because I can't, I, I don't understand like how you would have to do something like that. Like you just, ha- you have to dive into people's DMs, right? Like there's no other option. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, do they have, do they do anything like that on, in, in Instagram um, games? Um, you, so there's a couple ways you can do it. The first one is like, you can take a screen cap of your character or some like any aesthetic image, whatever you want to post, a mm-hmm. meme, you post it, and then you'll go drop an emoji for HC's head cannons plotting or um, a, a starter, essentially. Mm. Um, and then whoever wants it can comment an emoji on the post, and then you can slide into their DMs. Mm. Um, it's it's similar on your story too, where you can put like the question and answer marker, and then they'll drop the emoji as the answer, or you can put like can I slide into your DMs to do da 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 and then mm-hmm. put yes and no, but no one ever <laughs> chooses no <laughs> unless they're your friend and they're just trying to like troll you. Well, like, yeah, I mean, that would be mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> it really would be. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. So, okay. So yeah, so you could use the, the yes, no story, like voting thing, right? Um. And then whoever yeah. gets yeses, that's who you know to message. Okay, so that, I mean, that's basically the same thing. The way that you're describing using stories for that, that's basically the same thing, yeah? So I guess people yeah, really, they do stuff like that. Yeah, it's super similar. Um, I mean, again, a lot of times you'll just, you won't really be posting for starters because, again, the writing there is probably 5% to 95% not being written. But um, you can do, like, head cannons, which is essentially, like, creating a dynamic with somebody. Hmm. Mm-hmm. which is fun for about half an hour. Yeah. And then you're like, well, what's going to happen when we have nothing to write? <laughs> dynamics. I mean, I like I like doing some headcanons myself, so I can relate to that um, for sure. But then it's like, where's the role play afterwards? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's great for a little bit. And then you're kind of just sitting there like, well, this was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> but that makes sense. It sounds like really on Instagram, it's, it is kind of the same thing right as yep. uh, as the way we're doing it on discord because there isn't really a way to post opens kind of like the same problem we have on discord there's no way to post opens yeah opens are definitely not a thing unless like you're friends with someone and then you just go and you make like a dm and send them a starter but that's mm. not again not really an open it's kind of specific to that person yeah well i mean we would do that on discord as well like there are definitely times where it's like okay i want to do this specific thread with this specific character so i'm not going to post like a starter call for that i'm just going to like you know message brie because i want to interact with you know with your character or something like that there's no point in making a call um so you can still do that of course like your system doesn't cut that out oh yeah but it's essentially the same process just like you're 
posting a photo with it because you can't make a post on Instagram without a photo. Yep, that makes sense. So yeah, and and when it comes to the the starter call thing, the way that I feel about it, um, you know, as an admin and as the main admin and as a mod, I try to emoji as many people's starter calls as I possibly can. And I think that that's really important for retention is to have at least at least part of your mod, not everybody, right? Because not everybody has the capacity, right? But at least part of your mod team that is going through and making sure that every starter call gets at least a couple of emojis so that people don't feel like they made the call and it was kind of like shouting into the void, like, okay, well, I tried. Because <laughs> that's a really crappy effort. feeling. Yeah. It's like, no, I put yeah. forth the effort and nobody's interested. And it's like, <laughs> so yeah you know, it, it's not a nice feeling mm -mm. and that can happen sometimes especially after the role play gets going and people get busy and they have lots and lots of threads going on that somebody will post a call and no one emojis in it so like when that happens to me it's like that's my job to go emoji it so that would be my advice to other admins if you're using a system like this then understand that when someone posts an open like or posts a call like you need to go respond to it right as the admin to make sure that this person has somebody that to interact with if everybody else is too busy yeah even back when i was doing like modding role plays and adminning them it, it, we always had the system that like you wanted to write with as many people as possible mm -hmm. because, and make everyone feel included yep for sure and that's going to absolutely help with your attention 100 percent um, if your mod team is doing that, or at least a portion of your mod team is doing that. For sure. Yep. So that's, um, that's, that's way number two, essentially, that we kind of increase retention in our roleplay. Um, the next thing that I want to mention for a retention that we do is events. So this is something, it's part of the reason why Atlantis didn't end up reaching an actual conclusion or an actual ending, even though we planned one, is because we really didn't have a good events structure. And, uh, and I talked about this in another stream where I was actually building the Discord server for Freya's Voyage, our current roleplay, about how that was kind of like on me and I messed that up. So this is something that I feel like is super, super important for retention. And the reason why it's so important is because the whole point of events is to give people something to look forward to, to give them something that they feel inspired by. And if you can do that with your events, then it takes a lot of the pressure off of players of feeling like, well, gosh, I don't know what I want to, to write. I don't know what plot I want to do. What if I choose something that's not popular or it turns out that it's not as fun as I think it's going to be? And, you know, you know, the anxiety thought spiral, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we all and have. it is a spiral. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right? Like these are irrational thoughts like that I'm saying. But a lot of us as role players are very um, anxiety ridden. That, that's just that's just true. Just the demographic that role playing attracts. That's just how it is. So um, I think it's important to have a good amount of events in your role play that you're regularly doing so that you're contributing to making sure your players always, always feel inspired to write and inspired to take those next steps in their plot. And, you know, or, or maybe your event like changes things up for them, right? Um, Lunar says, I love RPG events. Yeah, me too. And I regret not coming up with an event structure where I could write them in Atlantis, but we're not doing that in Freya. Uh, in Freya's Voyage, it is every single month we're going to have an event, right? So it's going to be much better for me as an admin doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Bree. Sorry. Yeah, events, I think, like you said, they, they bring inspiration and they allow you to kind of branch out and write even with other characters that maybe necessarily wouldn't make sense in an ordinary scenario to be writing with your character. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly. Like this character that you never thought you'd interact with, maybe some event creates this situation where they have to be paired up, right? Like there are pairing events that you can do where it's like, um, oh, characters get paired off. Maybe if it's like a Warring Factions role play, maybe they get paired off to fight. Right? Maybe if it's a more like chaotic, like magic role play, we've done these types of events before where it's like um, sex pollen events essentially. And, uh, and characters get paired up and it's at random and, and the, the, your character is now in love with this character temporarily. Sorry, that's just how it is. <laughs> and, uh, and you end up getting like crazy pairings that you would never think like, well, my character has no interest in fighting this other character. Well, now there's a fighting event, so you have to figure out- Now they do. How, yeah, now they do, so figure it out, right? 
So stuff like that, I think, is a really good event. And just in general, like they don't even have to be complicated, right? They don't even have to be complicated like what I just described. The recent one we did was just like, here's a bunch of parties happening across the ship. Here we go. And people just took it and ran with it, you know, because they were interested in in the role play was new. So we could be lazy like that and be like, it's just a party, whatever. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Whoa. Thank you so much for the bits, Lunar. You are the best. Holy crap. (laughs) Ah, um, FYI, uh, Lunar, I've got some other stuff for bits, uh, because I know you like to do the bits sometimes. We've got sound alerts and stickers and stuff. You can find them in that little side thing on Twitch if you're interested in doing that for bits in the future. I added them with you in mind. Um, Okay, sorry for that Twitch derail. (laughs) But thank you, Lunar. I love you so much. Okay, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, they don't even have to be complicated. Like when your role play first starts, everyone's already super invested. You don't have to do much to keep them invested. Oh, <laughs> uh, you don't have to. You don't have to do that. You can just be like, "Here's a party that's happening." So, yeah. Uh, if if you do want to make them complicated, you can. Uh, Bree, do you have other types of events that maybe like you've done in the past or that you've really liked in the past? Um. I know, I mean, this is coming from, like, um, a three-on-three roleplay, but we did, like, for instance, like, because we're doing warring factions, we did, like, yep. a-, a bombing, oh, which was sh- super intense, and we killed off characters we've been writing for, like, seven, eight years. Oh, my God. <laughs> we usually don't kill them off, because when you're continuously writing, it just, it, you can have them injured as many times as you want, because this is fiction and we can do what we want when it's just three of you right so it's kind of like yeah it's whatever you know nobody nobody has to nobody has to get annoyed by that because you only have to please two other people yeah exactly and we're also comfortable with, with each other so like it's totally fine but um that was a super fun event that we did and we carried it on for quite some time because we're all adults we all had lives we were dealing with as well mm-hmm. oh i love that that sounds so fun. A bo- how, so, so you said like seven, seven, eight characters ended up passing away from that? Uh, no, characters we've been writing for seven oh, to eight years. Oh my god. How ma- Okay, so wait, so how many did you kill off? Like, what are we talking about? Oh, oh god. Um, I think so. God, there's probably like a hundred characters between the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you actually do the same roleplay for seven years, you know, and you end up role- yeah. roleplaying with the same people for so long. Yeah, I think we killed maybe, between the three of us, maybe about 15 of them. Holy crap. I mean, seven, eight years ago, it's probably time to to do a little reset, right? So that was probably needed. It probably made things feel fresh again. Yeah, it really did. And um, it allowed us to have cool, uh, I mean, cool and sad plot Mm -hmm. lines um, (laughs) for the characters that it affected. So it definitely gave us some good, juicy content to work with. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think, um, you know, this is something, this is a type of event that you can do if you're running like a more horror focused or like a mystery role play, which I don't, I don't even, I don't really advocate for too much. I talked about this in like my supernatural video, but if you are running that type of role play, having events like this that are very dramatic where like people have to die and maybe you randomize that or in some way, um, that can be really effective to make sure that the role play feels like a horror role play or really feels like a mystery role play, you know? Yeah, for sure. It made sense for our warring factions, so. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that sounds so fun. <laughs> it, it really was. Like, I'm I'm not mad about it. I'm sad that I can't make those characters anymore, but it it just led to better things. Well, re-roll them in Freya, right? Bring them yeah. back in Freya's Voyage. <laughs> I'm, That's I'm always my solution. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> That's always my solution. It's like, oh, I miss this character. I haven't written them in a while. Re-roll. <laughs> nope, for sure. <clears throat> yep. I'm trying to think, like, what other event types have we done in the past? Um... It's it's really it's really anything anything you think your players are going to respond to so like something that I do for example when it comes to events is I, as the main admin I feel like it's my responsibility to read everything in the role play okay is this overkill sometimes for cert- for some people yes not everyone has to be crazy like me but <laughs> this is what I do right so I'm always looking for stuff that we can turn into an event so like for example um, Thumper has a, a character in the current role play that is. Um, it's an alien relations officer, right? Because we're in space and there's aliens. 
And so it's her character's responsibility to like liaison with any aliens that we come across. So I'm like reading all of everything that she's writing and like, oh, she made up this alien race and oh, she made up this alien race. And for sure, I'm going to use that in an event in the future. Like that's happening. You know what I mean? There's no way I'm not going to. So when you're designing events and you want to know like what your players are going to respond to, uh, that's my advice is read as much of the role play as you possibly can because they're going to drop hints for you on what they're interested in because what they write is what they're interested in and that's how you can know what they're going to be interested in for an event, right? So obviously we have to do something with some of these cool aliens that she's creating, right? Absolutely. Yep. Crack AUs and dream events. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we used to do that spoof, spoof days, which we've talked about a few times on this show uh, in various capacities. But yeah, we used to have like events that were like, oh, and it was all a dream. And it allowed us to do like literally anything because then people weren't worried about like, oh, well, this breaks my plot here, there or whatever, because it was just a dream and it doesn't break your plot. And now you get to have fun doing whatever the hell you want to with your characters. That's a good idea, too. Um, especially if you need something that like is like a little bit irrelevant at that moment, you just need something silly. Well, make something crazy and then just say it was a dream so that nobody feels bad. I mean, hey, it, it works. I've definitely done plots like that, and they they can be super fun. Yep, for sure. We used to do them a lot in certain role plays. Um, I want to do. We we should do an episode. We'll probably do an episode in the future all about events, and we can dive into that more specifically. That would be fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so then last thing that I have for how we do retention in my role plays is to talk about activity rules. So this is something that is very, very important to uh, making sure that your role play stays, you know, fresh. Right, because nothing kills a role play faster than having a bunch of dead accounts chilling out in the role play, not actually role playing. Um, Bree, I'm sure you can you can speak to that. I'm sure you've been in role plays before where that happens, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we had so many. Sometimes it was ridiculous. Yeah, especially when you're younger and you don't really know what you're doing, right? And you're in that situation where you're like, you know, the teenager running a role play, and it's like it feels mean to kick people out. But the problem is, is if they're not actually role playing, and you don't kick them out, then a bunch of other people also stop role playing yeah. because they they see that oh, I'm not going to get kicked out, so I'm not going to put in effort anymore. Whatever, it's just a hobby, you know. <laughs> And then you, it, it's a spiral, and then eventually you're left with nothing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So specifically what your activity rules should be, I like, I'm not going to speak to that too much because I don't think it matters. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, if you really want people posting all day, every day, okay, have a 48-hour activity rule, right? If you, if you don't really care that much about activity and you want a slow-paced thing, I've seen people even have, like, an activity rule that was, like, uh, three weeks or four weeks or something like that, you know, something crazy long. Like, that's valid, too. It's whatever. I do one week because that's what works for the pace that we tend to set, but you don't have to. Pick whatever you want, literally anything. But the thing is, is once you pick it, you have to stick to it. And that means that even your mods, so if your mods are not keeping up activity, you have to post their activity warnings too, right? Because that's another thing that I've noticed in a lot of role plays. Like activity rules are for these people. They're not for everybody, which then creates this whole other problem, right? Like, um, Brie, have you been in that type of role play before where it's like activity rules only apply to some people? Yes, um, we, I was modding, so there was, there was two main admins, and then there was, um, two or three of us that were, like, beneath that. They, the admins did not, um, they didn't encourage themselves to be involved in that, so they, they could do what they wanted, and then, um, I think what her, one of the admin's sisters was in the role play, mm -hmm. and she didn't apply to it either, so it, it was fine for them, and then everyone else kind of got lumped into this category that like you have to follow the rules that we are so clearly above oh my god that's so frustrating right because mm -hmm. then it's like it creates it creates this like class division inside your role play of like people who the rules apply to and people who the rules don't apply to and then it's not fun anymore because then you start then you start seeing all the flaws of like how the admins are doing stuff right there's no admin no mm -hmm. no mod team is perfect right 
Every single mod team's gonna make mistakes. Every single mod team's gonna sometimes make decisions that were not the right decision, whatever, whatever. But if you're not keeping yourself to the same rules as everybody else, if your mod team's not doing that, then everyone's gonna notice all those things. Whereas before, they probably would have just let it go and not cared. So whatever activity rules you choose, the most important thing is to make sure they are activity rules that you can and will follow. Because if you can't and you're not going to follow them, then don't make those your activity rules. Choose some other time frame that you actually can follow and make that your activity rule, right? And then I guess this is kind of harsh, but if you really honestly feel like you don't want activity rules on you and you're making a role play because you're tired of having activity rules forced upon you and you want to do it without, um, don't. Like, I'm just, I'm sorry. It's just true. It's not gonna work. Like, I've seen that before. Like, I literally had a, somebody on Tumblr, like, a, a, an acquaintance of mine that I would roleplay with sometimes, get frustrated at activity rules in a game. And, um, oh, whoa. Those stickers are so cool. Okay, Lunar, sorry, that's the first time I've seen someone use them. Um, there's a really freaking cool, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> um, I saw somebody get frustrated and was like, I'm going to make my own roleplay without activity rules. And then literally a month later, they were like, why is my why is my roleplay dead? And like bitching about how nobody wanted to roleplay. And it's like, you didn't, you, you didn't give them any incentive. You gave them no incentive. There is no carrot or stick in this roleplay. That's why they're not roleplaying, right? You have to have both. Like everything that we've talked about so far, the applications, the starter calls, the events, those are the carrots, right? And you need yeah. lots and lots of carrots. But... You have to have a stick too. You can't have no stick uh, because then people will just find something better to do because this isn't a job, it's just a hobby. So the second that they're bored, they're gonna move on. And that's normal and that's fine. That's not like saying people are bad for doing that. It's just, you know, people wanna be entertained. So they're gonna move on to the more entertaining thing if there's no stick whatsoever, you know? Yeah, it's like being told like, go to work whenever you want. You don't have any set hours to come in. Nobody's going to go to work. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, this is what's going to happen when you have that situation. You're going to have people e that, that either don't work at all, right? Like, if you still let them collect their same paycheck without working, then they're just not going to. And then the other situation you're going to have is people that are, that are workaholics that then work all the time because it's the only thing they enjoy in their life, which is like, you know, I mean, anybody that's worked a job has seen that person, right? That doesn't like their home yes. life, and so they work all the time, right? <laughs> yep. So that's what's going to happen. Like, if you let people collect a paycheck without giving them hours they're supposed to come in, then you're going to get, you know, this tiny, tiny percent of people that does all the work, and then everyone else just jerks off all the time, right? <laughs> sure, absolutely. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen in your role play, too. And it's probably going to be you that's role playing all the time, and everyone else is going to be out there jerking off, right? <clears throat> Because you're yeah. the admin and then you're the only one that cares. <laughs> and then you're you're also attracting people because sometimes it's it people will come to a role play for maybe some out of character friendships. And then mm -hmm. you're going to get the people who are like, okay, there's no activity rules. So I can just talk here and create friends the yep. entire time. Yep. And there's absolutely role players that are here for that. They're not here for role playing. They're here to make friends. And I've seen that. And and that's not like a value judgment or anything, right? Like if that's, no, yeah. if this is your way to make friends, okay, cool, whatever. Um, I, I think it's good to know that about yourself so you know why you act certain ways. But like if that's you, then of course you're not going to role play the second you're given the opportunity to not role play because that's not even what you're here for. Exactly. Yep. Um, so those are basically those. So those are my main like retention tips. Um, Bree, do you have anything else that you would add to that for like things that you've seen role plays do or that you do in your role plays to help retain people? Um, I honestly, I think plotting, I mean, we talked about the starter calls, but I think mm -hmm. plotting in general, whether you're posting a plotting call or you're going to somebody to plot, plotting is super beneficial for retaining. Like, it, it keeps you engaged in what you're writing. Because, like, sometimes when you're posting a starter call, you're throwing up something random for somebody and hoping that it sticks. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But de definitely use... Um, your mind and the minds of everyone around you to create interesting plot lines that keep you wanting to come back. Yeah, it's it's hard, right? That's, yeah. That one's that one's probably the most difficult one to actually pull off because each individual player kind of has to do that themselves. You can't make no, someone yeah. plot as an admin. For sure. 
But if you're a player that's feeling like I, that you hop around role plays too much and you want to stop doing that, that would be the way to stop. Like if you start plotting, if you start thinking about like, okay, what are my character's goals? What are they going to do to achieve them? Um, what is it that they, the arc that I want to take them on? And then put getting yourself into people's DMs and being like, hey, I want to do this with my with my character. Can your character do this to help them out? You know, da-da-da-da, whatever the plot is, whatever the situation is you're trying to plot out. Um, if you're a player that's like, feels yourself hopping around a lot, that'll fix it, right? Like, that'll fix it for you. For sure. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely more of a player thing. I mean, mods can only do so much as, like, encourage it. But other than that, like, it, it's kind of in out of their hands and into the individual writer's hands yep because you can't make people plot or at least i haven't found a way to make people plot if i ever find one i'll tell y'all <laughs> just, just start messaging people and be like are you plotting <laughs> oh my god that's so invasive people would be like karen what the fuck why are you in my DMs asking if i'm plotting <laughs> they would be like are you they would okay be like, they would be like am i in trouble <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh. Yeah. So um so that's kind of like our our retention tips, right? Our both our carrot the carrot and the stick for kind of helping people stay in your role play that that want to stay. Um but I want to make sure that we talk about also a little bit why people leave. So Bree had mentioned this uh earlier that she that she has an experience that she wants to share about like joining my role plays in particular. So I want to give her some time to share that experience because I think this will help some of you guys that are admins that are like really struggling with like people keep leaving my role play. I don't know why I'm struggling with my feelings about that. Um, so yeah, Brie, take it away. Share, share your experience and, um, and your, your story with, uh, with how it's been joining various role plays of mine. Um, I know most lately it was i joined atlantis right i believe is actually when i was last on here last july or august mm -hmm. um uh, so it was kind of towards the end i don't know exactly when it closed but there was um a lot going on that i was very <laughs> i was i understood the the main the main plot line i understood the plot and it was perfectly fine i had taken a character that i was super familiar with from a tv show and kind of threw her in but I think my issue was that I felt like everyone was super comfortable with each other already, obviously. Um, and I didn't really know how to put myself into that out of character. And I think starting a role play kind of starts with our out of character. You have to go about making these connections and plotting and etc. to be able to get started. So I think I struggled with that a lot, um, which is why I think uh, Freya's Voyage is working out for me so well because I joined before it started so I didn't feel like I had to catch up I didn't feel like I was completely lost in plot lines that no longer related back to the first plot but things that happened during the role play mm -hmm. um, and I was actually able to create like have a sort of dynamic with people before going to jump at them in their DMs to be like oh hey plotting I want to do this and I want to do this or they want to do that and they want to do that and creating starter calls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what I want some, you know, admins that are listening to take away from that is you're going to have the most power to attract people to your role play at the very beginning of your role play. Once it gets going and once it gets started and some of those out of character connections get really solid and easy to see like people are going to join your role play and instantly know like okay this person's best friends with this person and this person's best friends with this person and these two characters are shipping together and so i can't really do these sorts of plots with them because that's already taken and da, 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 da. like they're running through all of this in in their head if your role play has been going for a while like they can see it instantly because people yes. are very perceptive yeah people are very empathetic right like just that's just naturally how humans are so they join and they instantly know that right just by skimming your chat and so you have to understand that once your role play kind of gets going, all of these things that we talked about for advertising and retention, if you want more players after that point, it becomes even more important to really foster that and really try to attract exactly who you're trying to attract. Because once your role play gets going, like someone like Brie, I think is great for our role plays, right? Like you fit in, you fit in great. You're just the kind of role player that we're looking for. But I love it. Yeah, and we and I love your writing. I think it's great. You know, I mean, I've been trying to get you to join my role plays for forever, right? <laughs> you have, you really have. <laughs> um, so you know, once your role play gets going, though, you are more likely to have those ideal players still not work out. 
And so I think it's really important as an admin to understand that going in. Like all of these things that we talked about before earlier in the video with advertising and with retention, it's the easiest at the beginning. And then like a month or two in, it gets much, much harder. And the second that you, you have a role play where you have more people leaving than coming in, because you want to keep that kind of like at a certain level, right? Once you have that, then the role play is going to start to die, right? Yeah. So I'm not saying you have to advertise 24 seven because you don't. If you have more people than what you want, don't advertise, obviously. <laughs> but if you don't have like a trickle of new people coming into your role play, it is going to lose excitement for a lot of people. So just understand that it's going to be harder because everybody that's coming in, they are more likely to leave than they would have been if they had joined at the beginning. And that's just normal. Yeah, like for me, at least, I know I never want to step on anybody's toes. Mm -hmm. So like when something is so well established, um, it is harder to make your character to or like to put your character into plot lines that have existed for sometimes weeks or sometimes months even. Mm -hmm. um, so re for me, joining at the beginning was definitely beneficial, again, for my own anxiety and actually talking to people. And second, to be able to throw my character in at the beginning of something without having to constantly think over, you know, what's been done, what can I do new, um, and how can I make it work with things. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, lot, less, um, a lot less anxiety when you're there from the start, right? Because there's less yes. things that, that pops up that your mind can kind of turn into that, that spiral of like, oh, no one's going to like me. They're not going to be interested in my characters or whatever, right? Yeah, and it's no, it's nobody else's fault. Like, I, it was totally just my own brain, like taking it to the next level in my own head. But um, anxiety is a real thing, and like you said, it's it's super popular in role players. Like we, mm -hmm. a lot of us do have anxiety. Yep, it's very common. I think, and I mean, it's a hobby that you can do online for free, right, without showing your exactly. face. So of course, <laughs> of course, role <laughs> players skew more towards having anxiety and things like that. So it's important to keep in mind, I think, um, as a, from an admin's perspective. You know, a lot of times when when they leave, you know, especially like in, in Bree's case, it's not about you, right? It's as it, it's not about you. It's not about your role play. It's not necessarily that you did anything wrong. A lot of times, it's it's just like just circumstance, and it's just well, that's how it is, you know. And, and even when I was leaving, I, was, I personally knew what was going on in my own head was like deeper than it definitely was. But sometimes you just like people have to do what's better for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't matter, right? Like you can be like, I know this is an anxiety spiral, but is it really worth this hobby to push myself through an anxiety spiral? And maybe the answer is no. <laughs> you know yeah. and that's legit like sometimes it's just not freaking worth it you know and it doesn't matter that you know you're being irrational like that's not the point the point is like how much energy are you going to devote to a hobby you know yeah Ex yeah especially like mental energy like it, it, writing in itself is mentally challenging to do mm -hmm. so to be able to like have to deal with it out of character and not knowing how to approach people which again is not my expertise per se anymore but yeah it, it definitely helped a lot to join at the beginning and i won't be leaving so <laughs> oh yay because <laughs> I, I i love reading i love reading your writing like the ship that you and summer have going like that is it's so good it's so good i'm like i'm here for Thank it you. right <laughs> i'm so excited about it uh okay a good comment from um jane here I think the mods in Freya's Voyage and past servers obviously do a good job modding how to engage new folks and make them feel welcome. The gang really follows suit. Very different than I've experienced in a lot of places that make that outreach feel really fake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've experienced that too, where they're like, the outreach is there, but it's like, but like you can sense that they're not really interested. And I, and I guess, and you say that, Jane, and I think that's wonderful and I appreciate the compliment, but I do think that because I try to treat everybody the same but I do think when I don't actually like someone that they can probably tell and they would say that I was just as fake as those other mods that you're talking about <laughs> you know what I mean because yeah uh, since I started this channel right we do get people that join our role plays that 
are not there for the advertisement. They're there because they have formed some kind of parasocial thing with me. And and now that Landon's on this, you know, this show a lot, I know she's not here today, but she's on this show a lot. Um, sometimes it's with Landon, right? So they'll form some kind of parasocial thing and they'll be like, I would love to be in Karen's role plays. But that's not true. <laughs> And they don't know that that's not true until they join. And I, I think that they would probably tell you that they found out I was fake or something like that. Because <laughs> I think they know. We can't help it. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, I'm sorry. Like, I can't. I wish I could control who I liked and who I didn't like, but I cannot control this. Um, you know, and if I ever learn how, I will share this with you guys. But today is not that day that I know how to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I guess. Think... No, go ahead. Sorry. I, I think a lot of people forget, too, like mods are in the end like they're just people so some we're not they're not gonna like everyone but like i think you guys do a, a really good job at making sure everyone is welcomed whether that sticks or not like that that's you guys can't really do too much about that in the end but well i appreciate it because we do try really hard and i think it's important that everyone feels like you know that they're treated fairly right like not necessarily like if they decide the role play's not for them and they weren't actually welcome that's cool but i hope that they they don't leave feeling like they were unfairly treated you know like that would be that would suck i feel like yeah yeah um okay so like in conclusion essentially what i want to leave you guys with and brielle you get us we'll, we'll have you second do closing statements on this before we do the article of the day but um no role play is perfect right so no matter how you set up your role play for, see people are going to leave people are going to leave for certain reasons people are not going to click your ad for certain reasons right like it's not you're never going to have it perfect but you can always improve based on these tips that we've given and taking your own observations to heart right like advertising it really isn't as much about skill as it is about like realizing inside what you're looking for and projecting that out into the world and it comes with experience so every role play that you open every new advertising push that you do um, every time you think about changing something in your role play just kind of keep some of this stuff in mind and think about what it is that you could do better to advertise better to retain the people that you want to retain better and like constantly tweak it over time and that's how you're really going to get to a place where you're attracting exactly who you want to attract so yeah absolutely go for it Bree. closing closing statements on on advertising and retention honestly i think those four words were about summed it up no rp is perfect and if something works for you and it has worked for you in the past continue to do it and if it hasn't change it you're you can't lose anything by changing it you can it's either going to stay the same or it's going to change hopefully for the better yeah, hopefully, right? I mean, I, I, I've definitely made decisions that uh, make things worse sometimes, but that's rare, right? Like usually when you make changes, it gets a little bit better. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Well, let's do this. Um, so, uh, so since I'm producer and host today, <laughs> uh, I found an article for us that I'm going to pull up. But Bree, I don't know if you, because we didn't actually talk about this. We probably should have. Oops. Um, but did, did you have uh, an, a good news article that you wanted to talk about or no? Oh, did we I lose did not. No? Okay. That's what I thought. Because no. I told you I was going to produce and, and host today. Okay. So let me switch my computer over. And we will pull up our good news article for today. Okay, let's go to desktop. All right, so since we mentioned Freya's voyage a gajillion times, here's what I want to share with you guys today. There are 300 million potentially habitable planets in the Milky Way, according to NASA. So when are we going to go? You want to you wanna go on Freya's voyage and find a new planet, Brie? I'm down. <laughs> Uh oh, I think we're lo are we losing your audio again? Oh, um, is it good now? Oh yeah, it's good. It's good. Okay, it's go ahead. <clears throat> I I didn't hear what you said. It like blanked out for me. Oh, so sorry. Um, <laughs> I said okay. Are you ready? Since there's three million potentially habitable planets, let's go find one and um and start over on a new planet. I think that sounds good. Oh yes. Yeah, let's go. So here's what it says. Um. Our galaxy holds at least an estimated 300 million of these potentially habitable worlds based on even the most conservative interpretation of the results in a new study to be published in the Astronomical Journal. So what that says to me is there are definitely aliens, y'all. There are aliens, aliens and they're out there and some of them might be watching us. I don't know about that, but maybe, I mean, 300 million, there has to be another planet 
with life. There has to be aliens. They must exist. So um, Thumper, I don't know if you're still in the chat today, but if you're still here, uh, what you're writing in Freya's Voyage, that's not fake. That's real. It happened. Definitely. <laughs> I don't trust people who don't believe in aliens. Oh my god, it's so true though, right? Because if you think about it, I don't know, I watched Contact at a very young age. That movie came out when I was a, when I was pretty young. Yes. And um, that's like, oh, what an awful waste of space. And, uh, and that stuck with me. And I believe it. Like, I really, really do. Now, do I actually think like all these people like get abducted and things like that? I'm not so sure about all that, right? Like, I'm not so yeah. sure that there's actually like UFOs visiting our planet or that sort of thing. But aliens are out there. Um, I don't know what their technology level is, but they're definitely out there and they might know we exist. They might be studying us. I don't know. Um, I, just I think recommend. It's crazy to think that we'd be the only things living on a planet. What yeah. makes humans so special? Yeah, like how how could it possibly be so special? I mean, how many extinctions events have we had on this planet, and it hasn't gotten rid of life? You know exactly. You know, right? like it has to be. It has to be right. I, uh, I'm right with you. Yep. Marina says, um, "I recommend the Great Filter by Kirkskazat." Did I say that right? I've been practicing. I've when I learned of this channel, I couldn't say it for the longest time, and I kept trying to practice it. So you tell me if I got it. I know it's a German word. Um, this is it's their video on the topic of aliens. Yeah, that's a great video. The Great Filter explains to you um, why there's definitely aliens out there, but why they probably have not in, been in contact with us. I'll look into that. Yeah, sounds good. I'll link it in the cafe. Yeah, please do. It's a great video. Um, I love it. It goes through this theory of basically like, if if there's all these planets out here that that for sure and aliens exist right we know that they must why are they not contacting us right and it's like what's the point of civilization that uh that that things stop right and we don't know what that point is it's fascinating it's a really good video so yeah there's definitely habitable planets out here so don't worry when we've destroyed ours um elon musk will take us to the new one and we'll all be um his indentured servants on you know the new planet colony It'll be cool. <laughs> we'll have to name the ship of travel phrase voyage. For sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's go back. Let's do our ending. Okay, so that's it. That's the show. That's Interstage Window. Thank you so much for joining me today, Bree. It was so much fun to have you on again. Oh my God, thank you for having me. It was, it was a good time. Yeah. Okay, so tell everybody um, where they can find you or if you have anything you want to plug, go for it. This is your moment. Um, I guess y'all can follow me on TikTok, TikTok at <laughs> that girl Brie J, um, and Insta at Brie Jeanette. Yeah, I can say um, I don't browse my Insta too much. I do post there, but I do browse my TikTok. And Brie has some pretty good TikToks, y'all. She has some pretty good ones. So go check those out for sure. Um, all right, where you can find me, you can find me right here, right here on Twitch. We have Interstage Window, which is my conversation show where we deep dive into a topic about role play. That's every Saturday at noon. I also have Artistic License, which is my Thursday stream that goes, it starts at 630. And that's my variety kind of do whatever we want stream. Currently, we are playing Final Fantasy 10. However, we're going to take a small break this coming up Thursday, and we are actually going to play a game that was created by one of my patrons. So um, Naomi Norbez, or Bez, that's the other name that they go by, has been a wonderfully amazing supporter of mine, and uh, they also design video games. So I'm going to play one of their video games that takes a lot of inspiration from Neopets, right? So if you guys role played on Neopets, or if you played Neopets as a kid, uh, come check that out on Thursday. We're going to be doing a first impressions of that game. Everything I told you right now, that's all I know about it so we're going to discover it together um you can also find me on youtube we have spare room which is my show where it's a more like scripted discreet topic about role play help right and that goes up on wednesdays at 2 p.m i also have all of the usual ways to support me however you want to write subscribing to the twitch don't forget you can do that with your amazon prime if you have your prime hooked up to your twitch um, you can do bits here. I've got a PayPal link down there. I've got a Patreon, you know, all the normal stuff, right? And uh, I also have a Twitter and a TikTok. And I guess since we've talked about Instagram a lot, I can tell you all I have an Instagram too. All of them are the same. It's at It's Karen Terry. You can find me there. Um, on my Twitter, it's mostly advertisements, but I do post hot takes. My Instagram is mostly food pictures. Okay, so if you're into that. And my TikTok, also mostly advertisements, but on the weekends, I do post actual, like, legit TikToks. Uh, today, I posted one about doing the spicy ramen challenge. So we uh, we, we did a, a basically a, a meme of decades past, a YouTube meme of decades past, because we accidentally bought the 
the spicy ramen challenge ramen on Amazon. Oops. <laughs> so you can go watch that. Um, and that's it. That's all. That's all I have for you guys. Don't forget to hit follow if you've been enjoying the stream. And um, don't forget to make it a great day. And, uh, and everybody, everybody give uh, Brie a round of applause. Here, I'll give you one, Brie, before we, before we end. Here we go. <laughs> She doesn't have the stream sound on, so she couldn't hear that, but <laughs> everybody was applauding up. you. Oh, good. <laughs> all right. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, I will see you guys all on Thursday. <laughs>